Hi, my name is Jonas Brunskog and I will talk about structure bond sound or we might also call it vibroacoustics. So this is, due, this is uh, about the acoustics in machines, vehicle ships or uh, buildings and constructions. So what we are dealing with is very different in size. We are considering ships or uh, um, wind farms, big objects but we're also dealing with small objects like mobile phones, uh, hearing aids, and so on. In these cases, there is a, typically a source, uh, and then uh, waves being transmitted uh, in the structure, and then these waves are radiating to the surrounding. And it's this, radia this radiated sound that we usually is interested in because this will be annoying or perceived uh, by, by our ears. So the sources can be of different types. Uh, one type is transient, sound, uh, transient sources. This could be moving uh, parts of, of an engine, but it can also be uh, like a punch press in, in a production line. Um, other types of sources are, are periodic in time, and typically then they are, are due to rotating machines and unbalanced rotating machines or gearboxes. But it can also be a, a wheel moving over a periodic structure. The third kind is random sources. Um, um, this can be a, a wheel uh, moving over a roughness. And then the interaction here will, will cause a, a stochastic uh, signal. Um, the waves in the structure, the, the um, solid structure, uh, is more complicated uh, and diverse than the waves, the acoustic waves in air. In air, we just have longitudinal waves, meaning that the air particles are moving in the same direction as the propagation. This kind of waves can also be in a structure. Uh, in this way, we, in this case, we call it quasi-longitudinal waves. Uh, we can illustrate that uh, with this spring. That would be a wave, something like this. We can also think of uh, shear waves. And then it, that will be something like this. Now we cannot see this motion because it's uh, moving just around the central axis. But it's the third kind of waves that is most important in, in structure bone sound, and that's the bending wave. That will be a wave like this. And you can now see that uh, it's really easy for me to excite this wave. And um, that's one reason why these waves are so important. They're really easy to excite. But also due to the transverse motion, that means that they will also radiate sound really good. So the, the radiation um, happens when we have a big surface uh, that can radiate sound. And then we have, typically, we, we will have bending waves in this structure. And it could be a musical instrument like this. Um, I could illustrate this with this toy uh, that produce vibrations, uh, uh, but will not radiate sound really well. If I now connect this one to this table, you should be able to hear the sound really good. And this is because we have now coupled it to this, this plate that have bending waves and they are radiating good into the room. So it will be something like this, that we have bending waves in the structure and they are coupling really good to the acoustic waves. Especially at high frequencies where we'll ha have a matching of the wavelengths. This matching of the wavelengths will actually not really happen at low frequencies when the wavelengths in the structure is smaller than the wavelengths in air, and then we will not have a good uh, sound radiation there.